It's a Voron V0. It's enclosed. And it's PLA. Stick around. Let's take a look at it. Hey everybody, I'm Scott, Edge of 3D, and they said it couldn't be done. Uh, that's the benchy that it printed, so it can be done. What am I talking about? Well, it's it's a PLA printer. Not not a printer for PLA. We certainly you can print PLA on it if you leave this open and leave that open, but uh, if you leave this closed and this closed, you can print ABS and ASA on it. The printer itself is made out of PLA. Everything here is PLA. Everything, if it's printed on this printer, it's made out of PLA with the exception of one part that started PLA and I finally threw up the white flag, cried mercy, gave up, reprinted that part in ABS or ASA. I don't remember anymore. It's been... 53 hours of printing and at least 40 of those hours, if not more, have been with the new part. So let's get into how we got to here. So a few months back, Polymaker sent me a whole bunch of filament along with an NDA. Here's here's this new filament. Here's all the brief on it. Here's, this is what, it, you know, it, it'll do this and this and this and this. And if nothing else, I test what people say. And I do the same with Polymaker. If they tell me this filament will do this and this, I'm going to test this and this. And Polymaker won't know the results of my tests until they watch the video the same time you watch the video. Because I don't share it with them. They are a channel sponsor. They do give me money each month to buy filament with and so on and so forth. But they don't get to see anything before you do. So I tested their high temp PLA. In my testing, they had their own set of testing the way they did it. They printed little signs, put them in an oven, and they did this. I, I did my testing differently. I used my sets of tests. Video's up here somewhere, the HTPLA launch. You can go watch it. Um, one of the things I did that nobody else did as far as I know and certainly didn't put out a video about is I grabbed that old ANET A8 printer right up there, and that's what I used to print all that stuff for that video. And I also printed this entire printer here on that ANET A8 right there. So those of you that haven't been around printing very long, you'll have no idea what I'm talking about. Let's just call it an old printer. Those of you that have been around for quite some time, I haven't burnt my house down. I still use it. So don't believe everything you see on the internet or hear on the internet. Believe what you, believe 50% of what you see and none of what you hear. That's what my dad used to tell me. Anyway. I haven't burned my house down, the ANET A8 printed this. So I did all the testing, the video was launched, the use case for this high temp PLA, glass fiber and the non-glass fiber, is not for printers. I can't stress that enough. They do not promote this as a material to be used to build printers. but. I wanted to try it anyway because I wanted a DeWalt printer because they sent me Power Tool Yellow, which looks exactly like uh, DeWalt. It's Power Tool Yellow. I'm calling it DeWalt. I can put a DeWalt sign on right here and I can sell this printer for twice as much money now. Not that I'd sell it, but you get the idea. So they have four Power Tool colors. Um, Power Tool Yellow, Power Tool Red, Power Tool Teal, and Power Tool Green. So you can figure out which power tools those colors coincide with. I have not touched any of the other colors as far as the Power Tool colors. Only the yellow, it matches. Steve Builds asked me how close is it. I printed another duck. I took it to my office. I took pictures of the said duck next to said DeWalt Power Tools other than the tools were absolutely filthy because they get used every day. It's the same color. So now I have a really cool V0 to sit next to my monitors over there in my office and I use it all the time. Uh, I use it to print test pieces. You know, when I get a new filament in and I need a baseline for 
you know, printing it and testing it in the machine to break it and stuff like that. I can throw a one off on here real quick. It's got a tiny little build plate to heat up. I'm not heating up a 300 millimeter plate and heating up the entire damn office when it's 105 degrees here right now. Uh, I use it. I use it uh, almost daily. To date, right now as it sits here, 53 hours and 21 minutes I've used it. So let's get into what didn't work. I was told that none of the parts would work because they're printed or they're sized for the shrinkage of ABS and ASA. And they were right on one part, one part. One very non-critical part that if it wasn't on this machine would not affect its ability to work and you wouldn't even see it unless I turn it around. And that's the back panel here on the skirt. I had to shrink it by 5% this way to get it so it wasn't pushing the legs. Well, this leg over here doesn't push out because it's got the whole power block. But this leg over here that's got the filament runout sensor in it is cocking it out a little bit. So I shrunk it by 5%, reprinted it. That is the only part on this entire printer that I resized. The rear skirt. The rear skirt section. That's it. Nothing else is resized. Everything is exactly as it came off of the GitHub. Their STL files printed it. Everything has worked just fine. The other issue that I had is when I first built it, I printed this duck here out of high temp PLA. And then immediately after that, I needed to print a um, airless uh, softball or airless uh, tennis ball. And I wanted to print it out of some really soft uh, TPU, some 85A, which I actually print with 60A, which is like trying to shove uh, gum rubber through an extruder, but 85A is pretty soft too, so I had the printer sitting underneath the shelf and I had the lid off and I disconnected this line here and I put a little short piece and set a spool up on the shelf and fed directly down into it. 10 hour print to print that uh, um, tennis ball and it worked perfectly. Then I believe it was a Voron cube that I printed next, and that's when I got it serialized at serial number 4137. At that point, I put some ABS in it to print something, and halfway through that print, an hour into it, and I don't remember what it was I was printing, it just stopped feeding. So I went through the normal, trying to figure out what it was. And finally determined that the no matter how much I tightened Okay, here we are in the post-processing where I'm editing the video. I go to look up the Guidler to show everybody what it was, and I realized I missed a critical step in all of my attempts at this, and I did not get this screw inserted into the Guidler as I have circled here. So that could have made a huge difference. Back to the video. We're going to try this again with the screw and the HTPLA part, and I will put out a YouTube short updating that. This, it would not grip the filament inside. So I tore into the tool head, and I found this little piece here was cracked. So I reprinted this piece on the ANET A right there out of the same material, put it back in there, same result, an hour later it cracked. So I went on to a quest to see if glass fiber or non-glass fiber would work better, annealed, not annealed, kept getting the same results. So I, I threw up the white flag, cried mercy, that part right there called the Guidler. Here's a PDF of what it is. That part right there for whatever reason will not work in this material at higher temperatures. I don't know why I'm not an engineer you should know that by now. Um, that looks about right as my engineering degree, TLAR. So I, I, I reprinted this part on the ANET 8, put it back together, immediately reprinted this part in ABS, tore it back apart, put that part in there in ABS. I have not changed anything on this printer since. It's working fine. So if you decide you need a power tool colored printer, and you want to use their power tool colors at uh, Polymaker, link in the video description down below to my affiliate account. 
every little bit helps. Um, the first thing you should print when you get it printing is the guidler. Go in and change that out. And then I would strongly suggest you probably print the whole entire tool head assembly with the exception of the front cover. I mean, this main cover here, you can leave it. This, this really isn't heat related. So if you're wanting to do that as the, as the power tool color, go ahead. It's not going to hurt anything. As far as the rest of the materials in there in the enclosed chamber, it's not heated. It's not going to get that hot. We've already proven in the testing on the launch of this that uh, the temperatures inside of here are not going to get hot enough to affect this. You know, over time, will it wear out and break? I don't know. It might, but right now, it's got 53 hours on it. Everything in here is still solid as heck. The, the belts are still tensioned where I initially tensioned them at. It's all working. So... You do you, boo. I got a really cool printer. I might give it away at the next RepRap Festival. I might make another one. You know, a real big shout out to Fabrico, uh, Hector. Uh, when I decided I wanted to do this project, I did not have the stuff to build a V0. I have the stuff for a Trident. I have the stuff for a 2.4. But my half a roll of filament of uh, Power Tool Yellow that I had left was not going to be enough to print either one of those. So I opted for a V0. And I had a few things I needed for it, but there was a whole lot of stuff that I didn't have because I typically don't mess with printers that use these smaller components. Wanted to do an LDO kit, but he didn't have a black LDO kit in stock. Um, in fact, I went searching and nobody had a black LDO kit in stock. So uh, Hector told me to get him a list of everything that I needed. So I made him a list of the stuff that I needed, and four days later, the UPS man shows up at my office and hands me a box. And three or four days after that, I had a working V0 printer, and this is it. Like I say, the guidler's been changed in it. That's it. That's the only thing I've changed in this entire printer is this little piece right here. It is printed in ABS or ASA. I don't know which. Other than that, it just works. 53 hours into it now, it just works. And as you know, most things that you print on a on a V0 or 10, 20 minute prints, so that's a hell of a lot of prints that this thing has spit out so far. Uh, I think the longest print to date in uh, high temperature film was probably, probably this Benchy in here. I don't remember now, I use it all the time. I print test pieces, I break them, they don't have to be pretty, I haven't tuned this printer. I kind of adjusted the belts by ear initially, and honestly, I don't think I even tightened the screws down in here on the on the A and B drives yet. So, the one other thing that I did come across, and I think it might have to do with shrinkage or material or whatever, is the cam locks on these corners for the, the screws. As you'll notice, one's missing here, there's still one here. The problem I ran into with those is they're just a little bit oversized, so the hex has a tendency to slip in them and they're kind of hard to turn so I'm, I'm thinking it might be a shrinkage thing they were designed a little bit bigger to account for the shrinkage because they're a pretty solid part when they're printed so they're going to have some pretty good shrinkage and they're just they're just oversized i haven't bothered to mess around with it i don't care if the top's latched or not it, it's good enough so there you go the voron v0 Shout out to Polymaker for the filament. Shout out to Fabrico. I can get up above the printer. Fabrico for uh, supporting the build. Uh, Fabrico supports me a lot. Hector's good people. Link to Fabrico down below. Link to my Polymaker uh, uh, affiliate down below. Uh, like I say, if you want to do it, go for it. Does Polymaker support it? Nope, that's not what this is designed for. This material is not designed for building printers. Can you? I don't know if you can or not, but I did and it works. Do you need a special printer for it? Well, if you can find an ANET A8 that's still for sale, you can print it on that. So, um, a Creality, what, what is the ender the creality ender 3 i think that's the really cheap one that you can sometimes get for 99 but i don't even know if creality still sells those or not i used to have a bunch of them 
You don't need a special printer to print this material. You can print something like this right here. Would I use this material to print a Trident or a uh, V2.4? Absolutely not. There's a whole lot bigger stresses and stuff in, going on inside those bigger printers. This little thing right here, it's pretty damn cool to have a DeWalt printer sitting on your desk. And I, I'm pretty confident that sometime here in the real near future, I'll either do another one of these out of an LDO kit or somebody else's kit or self-sourced to have on my desk at my office at my real job just because they're cool and I deal with aerospace people on a daily basis aerospace people recognize tool colors aerospace people love walking into my office and talking to me about the printers that are sitting in there because that's where my overflow goes is to my office at my job Having something like this on my desk, talk about a conversation starter and an icebreaker when I'm talking about contracts with somebody on multi-million dollar airplane wings. <laughs> you know, it's cool. Especially if I can have it printing something while we're sitting there talking. So I appreciate each and every one of you that take the time to watch these videos. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. Leave a comment down below. Positive, negative, indifferent, doesn't matter. Hit that subscribe button, that helps. Hit the bell icon when you want to see the next one drop. And as always, peace out.